Hey guys, it's Sarah and today's video is going to be my one month one palette update for October. I'm going to be recapping my September palette which was the Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture palette and then I'll be introducing the palette that I'm going to be focusing on throughout October. So subculture was a lot of fun to play with in September. Um, I've said this a few times so I feel like this is just such a perfect palette for the late summer, early fall period of time. So my goal this month was to use each shade at least three times, and I set a low goal like that because some of the shades in here I just don't use super often, uh, but some of them I use a ton. And on top of that, my goal was also to hit pan on the shade Dawn, which I did hit pan on. I'm so excited. You may have already seen that if you've seen some of my recent videos, but I did hit pan on that shade. Um, I used it how many times? I used that shade 14 times throughout the month. I pretty much always dip into that shade anytime I'm using this palette because it's... It, it's just a helpful shade, especially with this palette because I do have trouble blending some of the other mattes. That's just a really good blending shade. Um, I use it as a transition shade a lot, and so um, yeah, really useful. I was um, not surprised to hit pan on it, but I'm glad that I finally did. Unfortunately, I didn't hit pan on any of the other shades. I said in my intro for the month that I thought I could maybe hit pan on one of the shimmers. I feel like I'm really close to hitting pan on cube and electric, but the texture of those shadows is so strange. It's it's almost they're almost like a cream shadow. They're very hard pressed, and so they're not nearly as soft as a lot of the shimmers in other ABH palettes. So I have not yet hit pan on them. I feel like I'm really close. So Dawn was my most used shade for sure. Um, I also used the shade Electric quite a bit. I used that shade nine times. It's a beautiful inner corner shade. It's a beautiful lid shade. I love that color. I think it's probably one of my favorite shades in the palette. Um, it's just different from anything else I have in my collection. Mercury I actually also used a lot. I used that one eight times. That's kind of like a taupey gray shade. It's a good kind of like outer V kind of color or like for a lower liner. Fudge I also I used that one seven times. That is um, a, again a really good lower liner. And then both Cube and Roxy, I used both of those six times. So those were my most used shades. The shades that I struggled to use were Destiny. Um, I actually struggled to use Adorn. I only used Adorn three times. That's kind of the bronzy shade. I'm wearing that one today and honestly I'm wishing I'd worn that shade more because it's really really pretty. For whatever reason I, I just wasn't doing really like dramatic fall looks a whole lot. I did a few but um Today's look, I'll go ahead and share what I'm wearing on my eyes today. I have Adorn on my lid. I have Edge in my crease. That's another one of the shades that I struggle to use a whole lot. But now that I used it today, I'm like kicking myself for not using it more because it is such a beautiful kind of mustard yellow. So that's what I have in my crease. I have Destiny in my outer V. I have some of New Wave on my lower lash line and then some Destiny on like the outer part of my lower lash line. And I have electric in my inner corner. So I used quite a few of the shades. Today I was really focusing on using those shades that I hadn't yet used three times. And I actually love the look. And I'm almost sad to be done with this one month one palette because I feel like I'm just barely getting started. You know, there's just so much going on in this palette and it's so fun for fall. So I have a feeling I'll be reaching into this palette a lot this fall, even though it won't be my um, palette of the month after now. I definitely found myself reaching into this quad right here a lot at the beginning of the month um, and then as the month kind of went on I started dipping into some of those more rich fall tones. I did a lot of looks. I actually wrote down every single look that I did with this palette, all the shades and where I placed them and everything. I don't think I want to list off all 16 of the looks that I have written down here. I feel like that might get really boring, but why don't I just go ahead and highlight some of my favorite looks from the month, and then at the end of the video, I think I'll just have kind of like a photo montage of the other looks that I did, and then on the screen I'll list the shades that I used. Does that sound good? Because I don't want to be rambling on and on <laughs> about all the looks that I did for the next like 30 minutes. So one of the looks that I did really early on in the month was a kind of bright peachy green kind of look. Um, and this was one of the looks where I used this first quad of shades. So for that look, I used a combination of Dawn and Roxy in my crease. Roxy is that really pretty coral shade. 
Um, and then I had electric all over my lid and then fudge as a lower liner. So really simple look. It was only one, two, three, four shades. This look I actually posted on my Instagram, but this was a halo eye where I also used some of those warmer peachy shades on the outer and inner corners of my eyes. And then in the center, I used electric. So for this look, I used, again, Dawn in my crease. That's usually the shade I use to start out a look. And then I kind of did a combination of New Wave, which is that sort of... Uh, more yellowy peach color, edge, and Roxy in my crease. So just a very warm yellowy peach crease was what I was going for. Roxy was also what I used in my outer third, and then I've had a Dorn in my inner third. So either corner was actually a different shade, and then the center of the lid, the halo, was the shade Electric. And then I used the brown shade Fudge on my lower lash line. That was another one of my favorite looks. I really, I, that was just such a fun look. Okay, this look was very dramatic, but this was one of the times that I paired this palette with the new Urban Decay Stone Vibes palette, which I've been loving. I originally was trying to do a very deep, grungy, smoky eye with some of those matte greens and teals in here, like uh, Destiny and Axis, but I, I had put Destiny, the olive green, all over my lid, and I just really did not like the way it looked. So that was when I went in and topped it, actually, with the shade tiger's eye from stone vibes and i love that shadow it looks kind of gold in the pan but it's actually like kind of a duochrome rose gold it really transformed the whole look so for that look i started out the crease with a combination of dawn and mercury um, and then i laid axis down in my outer v i put destiny all over my lid electric in my inner corner and untamed that green in my lower lash line and then I decided to just kind of top the inner like two-thirds of my lid with uh, Tiger's Eye from Stone Vibes. So it ended up being this really pretty like the way that electric kind of faded into Tiger's Eye was so beautiful that really kind of complemented the teal color as well. I feel like rose gold and blue or teal really complement each other beautifully. So that was definitely a very dramatic look, but also one of my favorites. It made me realize what a great pair these two palettes make. And then the next day I was so inspired to use Stone Vibes with Subculture again. I did a much lighter look for this one, but I put um, a combo of Dawn and Roxy in my crease, the peachy shade, Roxy in my outer V, Electric in my inner corner, and then actually Urban Decay's Tiger's Eye again from Stone Vibes on my lid, but it looks completely different on its own and not topped over like a dark green. And then again, I used Fudge on my lower lash line. So that was a much brighter look, but love that one as well. And um, now I'm obsessed with that Tiger's Eye shade. And the last look I'll share is an, one of my favorite ways to wear a matte peach color, whether you have subculture or any kind of matte peach in your collection. But I put Roxy all over my lid. And then I like to put a really shimmery shade in my inner corner, whether it's a gold or a champagne or like this green gold electric. I put that in my inner corner. And then I did like a smudgy winged liner with fudge. And then I did use Dawn as a transition shade again. So very simple look, I only used four shades. And it's not often that I do all matte all over my lid, but that is one of my favorite ways to wear matte eyeshadows, to wear a matte shade on my lid and then like a really pretty shimmery pop in the inner corner. I just think it's so pretty. So love that look. And then I also did a very kind of blue green look in my hot takes video that I can link below if you wanna see. Um, that look kind of done on camera, but that was really fun as well. Very bold, but really, really pretty. So you can really see from the looks that I just showed you, those weren't even all the looks that I did this month, but there's so much variety in this palette that I really did not get bored of it. I'm almost sad to be done with it for the month. There were also some times that I paired this with some of my Project Pan eyeshadows, so with my e.l.f. Soiree single shadow with my Wet n Wild Walking on Eggshells quad. Um, I was able to pair those together and you'll see some of those looks in the kind of montage at the end. Is montage the right word? I think so. Um, <laughs> you'll see that at the end, but yeah, I love this palette. Such a fun palette. You can't even get your hands on it anymore, or at least it's really hard to get your hands on it nowadays, but if you have it, a lot of people told me that you either have this palette or one of the dupe palettes. Like I know there's a Bad Habit dupe and I think a Makeup Revolution dupe too. So um, if you have anything like this, also the Elf Opposites Attract palette 
is it has some similarities to this as well. So you may be able to kind of shop your stash for something similar to get similar looks. So now to introduce my October palette. So last month I had you guys vote on my YouTube community tab between a handful of different kind of fall-esque palettes uh, that I had chosen and you guys did choose subculture. So this month I'm not going to have you guys vote. I, I don't think I'll do the voting every single month just because I know there are some palettes in my collection that may not win a poll just because maybe they're a lesser known brand. I think the palettes that are usually going to win are going to be the ones that a lot of you guys also own. But this month I really wanted to use one of my kind of indie brand palettes and that is the Billy Beauty Eyes of India palette. I shared about this in my best indie makeup video that went up last week. But this palette absolutely screams fall to me. I did a look with this this month that I wore in my indie makeup video um, with kind of these warm oranges and the gold shade and it just really got me excited to use this palette. So I was like, yeah, this is gonna be my October palette just because it's got some really great fall tones, some beautiful jewel tones, which I also kind of associate with fall as well. Subculture is 14 shades. This is only a 10 pan palette, so um, not quite as many shades to choose from, but still I just feel like there is a lot of variety happening in here. So last month I set the goal with Subculture to use each shade three times. I am going to set a goal for this palette to use each shade five times just because there are fewer shades. I think that's very reasonable. I'm sure some shades like um, the icy color here or like the matte brown and black, I'll probably use those even more than five times, but I think five is a good baseline goal for all of these. Do I think I can hit paint on any of these? I don't know if I'm very close to hitting pan on any of these and I have no idea how deep the pans are. So we'll kind of have to play it by ear. I would like to hit pan on perhaps Mayo. I've actually used that shade a lot um, and it does have a pretty good dip going on. Maybe some of these shimmers like Taj Mahal, Sona, and Tamara. Just because they are lighter, those are shades I use a lot all over my lid. So I think it could be doable to hit pan on at least one shade, but I guess I have no idea how deep the pans are. So we'll just kind of have to see how it goes. But if nothing else, I am looking forward to just seeing some more progress on those shadows. And um, as always, I will share a before and after photo of the palette just so that you can see how much progress I did make. So very excited to kick off a new month of One Month One palette. I hope to also at least use it on camera one time this month, whether it's in a get ready with me or I guess it would be some sort of get ready with me because I would be getting ready on camera. But um, yeah, so I'm excited. Yay! I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely let me know by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. I would love to see you again very soon. Um, like I said, I do these one month one palette videos every single month and I just recently started this series two months ago. So um, I'll link my previous one month one palette videos below and that is all for today. I hope to see you again very soon in my next video. Bye! Generous, generous.